Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. All you need to do is give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. Always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, I just want to give a great shout out to all the wonderful coverage that EWTN had over the weekend. Yeah. First of all, on Saturday afternoon, Renewal Ministries had Jeanette Bankovic. And She's she, good. <laughs> she is really good. And I even, I emailed, I, no, I texted her right after just to tell her how she blessed me so. And Why did she bless you so? Well, because she was just sharing the truth of her journey, how to have, how God's mercy and grace get you through really difficult times yeah. in life. Amen. And she shared about her story of her son yeah. and, and the accident and just went through it. Oh, it was so powerful. And then, you know, she just plugged you into uh, the blessed mother's heart. You know, it was just beautiful. If you have an opportunity and you missed it, you could always go to EWTN and put in Jeanette. I was on Saturday's coverage. It was outstanding. So thank God for that. And then I was blessed because EWTN also carried the coverage for the charismatic renewal, 50 they were years celebrating. Charismatic yeah. renewal, people with 35,000 or so people from different uh, groups came together there in the Circus Maximus. Right, and it was beautiful, and they were singing and worshiping, and yeah. ah, it did my yeah. heart good. So good. it's the day after Pentecost, and I said to you this morning, ah, so what happens the day after Pentecost? That was a great question. Like you know, this morning because we always do our, our readings. Sometimes we do them together. Sometimes separately. We always pray together. And you said, um, what happened the day after Pentecost? And I don't know if you meant the readings, you know, what are the readings for the day after Pentecost? But that's a great question. What happened the day after Pentecost? The power of God was on them. I, I think I said to you, uh, all the excuses were gone and they got about the work Christ called them to do. Mm -hmm. That's what happened the day after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And we're living in the day after Pentecost, aren't we? Yes. I mean, you had the ascension, you have the second coming, this is the day of Pentecost, the day mm -hmm. after Pentecost, that we should be empowered, filled, intimate with the Holy Spirit. Those uh, Catholics uh, especially emphasized the charismatic gifts. They were in the Circus Maximus, not to be confused with the Colosseum. Colosseum is often known for a place of, of martyrdom for Christians, but the Circus Maximus even more. Mm. I think that's across from the, the, uh, uh, the United States Embassy. Right. Overlook the Circus Maximus. More. Christians were killed there. And there you had Catholics lifting up their hands to Almighty God, praising the Lord in the place where so many had blood was shed. They would not, uh, not deny. They would say, Jesus Christ is Lord even unto their death. And this is happening today in various parts of the world. And we just heard this recently mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. and if it was in Egypt or if it was in Afghanistan or someplace. Christians were just going to worship and, and they were surrounded by fanatics and they said, you must deny the name of Christ. And these common men who might not be able to articulate every doctrine said, we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to know. We cannot deny the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And they killed them in front of their wives and in front of their children. Mm -hmm. They praised the Lord till the end. What happened the day after Pentecost? Suffering happened. The gospel went forth. The blood of the martyrs was seed. And so we are a part of that lineage. And I think, you know, about the Holy Spirit, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and, and beyond was that Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you often like you have no mother and no father. That Jesus Christ came that you would know that you have a heavenly father. And he shed his blood that those far away, those near, even fanatics, would repent and believe the gospel mm. and come to know that they have a heavenly father who loves them and brothers and sisters. And he said, the Holy Spirit would be given to witness to your heart that when you say, Father, Father, there'll be an echo. You're my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. You're my beloved daughter with whom I'm well pleased. Even unto death, you're my beloved son. You're my beloved daughter. I'm really pleased with you. But Lord, I'm a sinner. No, I love you. I love you and you're forgiven. Isn't our faith a great mm. faith? We have a guest, Steve Priest, who's going to be speaking with us. Great Catholic speaker, Steve Priest at gmail.com. He's going to be sharing just some thoughts and reflections on fatherhood. 
and Father's Day is coming up. It's coming up. It's in June, June 18th it's on the Saturday. Third Sunday. So don't go away. We'll be right back. It's great to be a Christian. Wonderful to be Catholic. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family. And if you have a question for our guest today, Steve, you can just give us a jingle right here during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And remember, you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And hopefully we will use your very wise question or your comment right here on the air. Well, today I bring to you a very handsome young man from Colorado. His name is Steve Priest. He is a Catholic speaker, and he's a father, and he's going to tell us about some of the special things that God is doing in his life through his gifts and talents, but the one that's near and dear to his heart is fatherhood. So, Steve, welcome to At Home with Jim and Thank Joy. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a joy to be here. Thank yeah. you so no much. Funny. It's a joy and a gym. <laughs> and, a, and a gym, mostly a joy. Thank you very yes, much. I'm very absolutely. sensitive yeah. about that. Okay. Yeah, thank you for having me. And what a fun topic as Father's Day is coming up, you know. Yes. Um, fatherhood, you know, when I was uh, first invited to be a part of this, the topic of fatherhood came up. And I thought, well, that's, I love speaking about fatherhood, but, uh, but how come? obviously fatherhood, but I think the world has in a way forgotten about the art of, of being a father. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really just spent a lot of time reflecting and praying through that. And what, what does the world need to hear about being a father today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm just really excited to go through that. Well, good. I'm so bit. glad. So tell us, you live in Colorado. Tell our family at home how many years you're married. Sure. And about your son. Is it yes. snowing in Colorado now, or is it warming up? No, it's warm, <laughs> finally. Okay. Okay. We had a very long winter. Um, so I've been married, it'll be 10 years Absolutely. in November, to my beautiful wife, Allie. And we met back when I was in college. Uh, she was a FOCUS missionary, actually, at the time at Colorado State University. What does that stand for, FOCUS? FOCUS, the Fellowship of Catholic University yeah, Students. Doing great work. It's phenomenal work. In mm -hmm. fact, we both worked for the organization for about seven years together as well. But... Um, so we met, uh, she was a missionary and I was still a student, and uh, gosh, you know, right away we kind of didn't know what was going to happen, yeah. and we started talking, and in fact, I actually uh, discerned the priesthood, uh, this, okay. because I always wanted to be a father in some sense. Yeah. I, growing up, I grew up in a wonderful Catholic home, and we, you know, we definitely prayed before meals and prayed before bedtime and went to church. And, uh, but I didn't have this like radical, I guess, um, encounter with yeah, Jesus, right. uh, you know, as a youth and mm -hmm. as, a, as a young kid. But in college, um, after going through kind of some crazy points in life, I, I had that encounter, praise mm -hmm. be to God, finally gave my life to him and discerned being a priest. And I, I went on a couple of retreats and prayed through yeah. that, thought through that, yeah. and just didn't feel the Lord really tugging on my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to, yeah. that encounter that's become kind of a an often said word now thank god you know in the catholic church but uh that's something that i didn't know either as a young man mm -hmm. growing up that the lord wanted something from me you know like i would look at him and you know, you're the lord you are god incarnate you're mm -hmm. whatever but i didn't get that he wanted me to reciprocate that love. Is that what you're talking about when yeah, you say encounter? Yeah, I mean, he wants everything, mm -hmm. right? And he's giving us everything, and he wants everything back. And what that, uh, I guess that encounter, that moment when you truly understand who he is and why he died for us, and mm -hmm. um, that's when we have that free choice right. to then give back, right? To, to give him so everything, I'm to all accept. In. I'm all in. I'm all in. Why you, you want know? me exactly, I Pushing don't Pushing all those chips to the middle <laughs> of the table right. and, and saying, I understand who you are. I understand what you did for me. I understand that you're offering me this free gift yeah. of mercy, this free gift of grace. Mm -hmm. uh, 
for my salvation, and all I have to do is accept it. That's it. Um, and, and then give everything. And so in that return. for you, you wanted to test does this mean I'm supposed to be a priest? Yeah, sure. Not I mean, just a priest, I, but a priest. Uh, uh, yeah. With a T. <laughs> with a T. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Right. That T yeah. is critical uh, in priest. Yes. Uh, so I had to discern, you know, am I, gonna, am I willing to give him everything? Mm -hmm. And so I did discern that, and I was ready and I was willing, yeah. but I didn't feel called. Um, so then my wife and I started dating, and, yeah. and things went from there. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so I knew I, or I thought I was going to immediately become a father in the sense of parenting children. And, uh, you know, we, we thought right away that we were going to conceive and we wanted seven kids and we went to Rome for our honeymoon and we were picking out all these crazy saint mm -hmm. names for our future children. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a month went by and we didn't get pregnant in two and, mm -hmm. and yeah. six and 12 and yeah. 24 months, two years mm -hmm. went by and, and we hadn't conceived a child. Right. And we, we almost didn't want to face that potential reality right. yeah. of the pains of infertility. Right. And so we kind of avoided it. Just and you're doing everything right. Well, sure. Uh, and I you have the best of reasons. Yeah. And like, right. how could this not happen, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so I, it's everything, a, everything. I mean, you know, your faith. <laughs> uh, we were well certainly praying. <laughs> we we'll were, move on. We're, okay. <laughs> so we were doing. We we were just waiting for the day, you yeah. know, and it didn't come. So finally, we thought, well, we should we should probably see a doctor mm -hmm. and get this checked out. And they gave us, you know, pretty much a zero percent chance of. Of ever conceiving a child, uh -huh. and uh, it really just hit hit us, you yeah. know, just uh, at the depths of our souls. Mm -hmm. Just well, what now? I thought, I mean, my question as a husband and a father, or potential father, future father, was God. I thought you called me to this mission mm -hmm. of being a parent, of being a father. Mm -hmm. Why this? And so I sat down with my spiritual director, and I said. I don't get it. I'm a little upset. I'm a little, you know, angry. Mm -hmm. Help me understand this. Should we, you know, should we move to Mexico? Should we move to Africa? Should mm -hmm. we do something crazy mm -hmm. that we couldn't do with children? Mm -hmm. right. And uh, in his guidance and wisdom, he said, no, just, just relax wow. and embrace the cross. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, as, cross, as Christ embraced his, mm -hmm. embrace this cross of infertility and, um, and just wait it out. And I said, well, should we go adopt a bunch of babies? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what about that? And he said, no, Steve, just be patient. Mm -hmm. And I was walking out the door, and he said, unless someone approaches you about adoption. And I said, well, that's never going to happen. Right. Thank you, but no, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, two weeks later, someone called my wife and mm -hmm. said, you know, my daughter's pregnant. Would you guys be open to adoption? Mm -hmm. And we just, we gave an immediate yes, mm -hmm. you know, because on our wedding day, we promised to be, you know, right. to be fruitful in whatever way we could mm -hmm. to children. And so we said yes. And four months later, we were given, you know, just an amazing gift, our son Colby. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's beautiful. Uh, at birth. So, it's you know. a beautiful way to, to say it. You know, we were given an amazing gift. You know, Joy and I work at a crisis pregnancy center, pregnancy medical center. Uh, Her Choice Birmingham Women's Center, it's named Her Choice, and we get 40% of our clientele are abortion-minded women. They mm -hmm. think we're an abortion center. Yeah. And so they're coming in thinking they want an abortion. And so we, we try and work with them and share with them. Um, and it's the last kind of thing they want to do, they think, mm -hmm. is to place their child to for... To consider adoption. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But they're considering abortion. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a real interesting point because we can say, well, if, it, if you think it would be painful or something, you couldn't give up your child, sure. but look at what you're about to do. Mm -hmm. you know? So we have to have the conversation. But my point is we try to have the right language and we talk to them not about giving their child up, mm -hmm. but placing, placing their child mm -hmm. with the God. And like, you're the other side of that. So we're trying to say to them, mm -hmm. there's somebody who would say, such a gift who's praying. Yeah. And you, you're the other side sure. of that yeah. mm -hmm. to see you. So you said it beautifully, what mm -hmm. a gift. That, this person gave you. And it is. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, our birth mother is just one of my heroes. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm just so grateful for mm -hmm. her choice. And, mm -hmm. and it's hard, right? And, yes. and Colby's biological father, you know, great man. And he had a choice there as mm -hmm. well. And so mm -hmm. they both made that tremendously difficult choice mm -hmm. um, to choose adoption. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. because of that, uh, we were able to yeah. become the parents that, that really, I, I believe, God destined us yeah. to at least try to be right mm -hmm. and God knew from the beginning of time right. that Colby would be our child right. he knew that and designed it 
Um, and so, and again, that's why you tell every girl who's in an unplanned pregnancy, mm -hmm. and maybe Colby's birth mother was in a planned pregnancy, but the child is never the mistake. Mm -hmm. The yep. child is never unwanted by God. Yep. It may be unwanted by you and your family or whatever, but it's never unwanted by God. Mm -hmm. And if we could just open our hearts and say, okay, I, I'm going to trust God that there is a plan for the life of this child yep. who f was formed by God in that mother's womb mm -hmm. to be put in your arms. Yeah. Like that is like, that's like extravagant love. Yeah, extravagant it's mind blowing. Mercy. And, it is. And that's, you know, I, I look at it uh, like Christ's love for us. And you mm -hmm. mentioned it before the show, Jim, um, how he's not gonna leave us as orphans. Right. He has adopted us. Mm -hmm. We are his adopted sons that's and good. daughters. Mm -hmm. and. If I can only attempt to love my son in the way that mm -hmm. I can only imagine Christ loves me as right. his adopted son, um, if I can only attempt that, you know, um, then I'm, I'm doing all I can, yeah. you know. But um, we named him Colby Joseph, mm -hmm. Joseph after the adoptive father of Jesus as well, mm -hmm. you know, because right. we look at St. Joseph as a model yeah. father figure, mm -hmm. and he was the adoptive father to Jesus. Yeah. He wasn't the biological father. Right. And that relationship um, had to have been just extraordinary yeah. of Jesus and mm -hmm. Joseph growing up mm -hmm. together and working together and Wouldn't playing you like together. to talk with him because he didn't say much. We, you, you not that we know of. Yeah. But, but he did a great guys, job. It's, it's action, uh -huh. right? That's it's right. action as well. So what has Colby done to you in terms of, you know, who you are as a man, mm -hmm. you know, as a father, your heart? Um, you know, what what has happened to you? I mean, of all the things you could have spoken about, and, you know, people may or may not know you, but, I mean, you speak on chastity, the new evangelization, mm -hmm. many, many subjects, and you say, well, now I want to come on and speak about being a dad, about yeah. being a father, and, you know, what this means to me and some mm -hmm. practical things regarding it. So, sure. What is he well, he's one of my best friends, right? I mean, he's he's six years old, going to be seven in a, in a month, and he's just, he brings a joy to my life that I, I can't get, you know, anywhere else mm -hmm. except from the love of Christ, right? And that is, that's what he brings me, is the love of Jesus. Um, and it's our relationship that we can center on Christ and just, uh, again, not get anywhere else. So mm -hmm. he brings me extreme just joy and um, brings me closer to Christ. Now there's, uh, fatherhood is not always easy, right? And really? You know that. Yeah, I do yes, know that. Yes, you have yeah. four yeah. children. I won't mention the 16 one. 16 grandchildren. <laughs> it's not always easy, and so there are difficult moments. Um, what, he, what he has taught me, he doesn't know he's teaching me, is uh, by his imitation, I learn a lot about myself. He, uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you've ever been they imitated, imitate, yeah. right. right? I mean, right. if I say something all funny. All the negatives and the positives. Yeah, all of, all mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And so if I say something funny and, and he sees that I get a reaction from my wife who rarely laughs at my jokes. But like, when, when she when does. When our grandkids come and they say words that I just kind of wonder about, I say to my kids, where did Where'd you, you learn, learn that, that word? <laughs> you know? yeah. it. it was hilarious. So, <laughs> and so I'll say a joke, he'll say it, you know, and just because he wants that same reaction, he wants to imitate me. If we're watching uh, sports and, and I get a little feisty at the television Maybe. set, sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. on a rare mm -hmm. occasion, <laughs> and I'll yell something, you know, immediately he's yelling it. And yeah. so sometimes we realize, okay, like, wow. that's not that's mm -hmm. not what I want right. my son to become or, or yeah. to right. imitate. Right. And so he teaches me uh, kind of the reflection I'm putting off to the world in a way that as I'm trying to pursue holiness, here's sometimes how the world is seeing me mm -hmm. by his imitation. Right. Um, yeah, and you know the Word of God says, right? Be imitators of Christ. Walk as Christ walked. Love as Christ loved. You know, imitate Him by the power of the Holy Spirit as best as you can. And so that's a responsibility for us as moms and dads, especially you know as fathers. How am I conducting myself? Yep. You know, what do I say? What well, do I how do? How do they see me too? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you think you're living life or you're saying doing a things plus. one you're way cool. and, yeah. and yeah. that's another. Yeah. <laughs> the beautiful thing though too about children is, and I, and I always tell this to our clients because we've lived it, they bring out the best in you mm -hmm. and they bring out the worst in you. <laughs> you're like, what? Because, you know, like I can remember I used to yell at my children. What a bad mother, but I did. I yelled because I wanted them to behave and I thought mm -hmm. the more I yelled, 
they would get it, but sure. they didn't. They just went deaf and paid no attention <laughs> to me. And I just yelled. And so, you know, I'd put them to bed at night, and Mommy mm -hmm. loves you. And, and then I would say every night, you know, I'm sorry if I yelled at you today, and I'm sorry, forgive me. And then one night, my one son said, Mama, every night you ask me to forgive you for yelling. And you know I'm going to forgive you, but when are you ever going to change? How'd that feel? We threw him out. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was, it was, it was just true. Yeah. It was just true. Well, like you say, it's reflecting. And right? it was, right. the Holy Spirit just was like, okay, grab onto this. And I can remember walking down the stairs saying, Lord, when am I going to change? Because I am infecting and affecting this child, you know? And repentance is, I'm telling him I'm sorry, but I ain't changing. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to teach him that repentance is change. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, I ain't saying it anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was right. Mm -hmm. And so they do that. They bring out the best in you, and they bring out the worst in you. And you think, like, you're in charge of them, but God is using them yep. to make a better version of Steve. Absolutely. And it's funny, because his kids are saying the same thing to him now. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, very right. interesting. But I yeah, love it. Around. I just yeah, said that. Yeah, you're yeah. yelling at me still. It, go, it yeah. goes around, you, yeah. know? Yeah. you know? But you're right. You're, you're a, a model. And I want you to share, because I've been reading some of your, your writings, and you talk a lot about touch, mm -hmm. you know, like meaningful, sacred, you know, touch or play, sure. you know, with kids. Um, share about that, some of the importance of that with yeah. a man with his child. With his children, so, sure. Yeah. Well, when we adopted Colby, one of the pieces of advice that we received was get lots of physical touch, mm -hmm. you know, so that they get used to you and, and you get used to them. And, and a lot of, you know, sometimes it was skin to skin, right? right. And so um, just, tr just trying to get to know each other. And this is as, as an infant, you know, when mm -hmm. there's no other form of communication except just existence and yeah. so physical touch is so important I mean look at our sacraments right right um, I was just at a confirmation a couple of weeks ago and it's the laying of hands right mm -hmm. and so physical touch is extremely important in communication yes well so our you know my son's not a cuddler he, he doesn't come snuggle up and mm -hmm. you know watch a movie or read a book right. with me he just He's, he That's has he energy, is, right, right. and so uh, you know, in my effort to try and get kind of that physical, that yeah. good physical touch yeah. with him is through wrestling, mm -hmm. and we love to wrestle, yeah. and we'll put it in the calendar sometimes. Like right. this is wrestle time, right. and he right. knows it, and I know it, and, mm -hmm. and we mark yeah. out the space, and it's go time. Right. And there's two rules: there's no tickling, and there's no hitting. Now he doesn't hit me. Right. I, you know, I would mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. hit my child, but there's no hitting, there's no tickling. And the reason, hitting's obvious, the reason for no tickling is because tickling is is uncomfortable, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. no one really likes to be tickled, mm -hmm. you know? Have you ever had someone say, hey, can, can you come tickle me? Yeah, you know, right. no, you never, <laughs> you right. never have right. that, or a child yeah. would never say that. Right. You know, and so he, he just, he doesn't like it. So those are the rules, is uh, no tickling and no hitting. But we, so then we just wrestle, and yeah. it's that good time. Yeah as father and son can just bond, yeah. you know, over yeah. that good physical touch. Mm -hmm. um, and he knows he's safe. Yes. And uh, he gets, we both get energy yes. out, which right. my wife yes. loves. Right. Um, it's beautiful. So that's well, enjoy it while you can, because at about age 13, I would wrestle with my sons, and, and then they would suddenly look at me and say, Dad, you know I can take you. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just give up now. But let's play. <laughs> you know, that was the only. Um, let's pause at this point. Sure. More to come with Steve Priest talking about the blessing of fatherhood. We'll be right back. Don't go away. back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for Steve, just give us a jingle during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we'll use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, Steve, it's been a joy just to share and to look into your eyes and your face, your love for your son, for fatherhood, 
And I pray that it's a great source of healing and hope for many people mm -hmm. out there because fatherhood is just so absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. um, you were mentioning this whole area of meaningful, holy, playful touch. Yeah. Do you have any other kind of like keys or things that you think components that are important in terms of building relationships with yeah the sure there you know there's a handful and I've um, just kind of look, looked at my own life at kind of what works you know and so the the five that I have kind of come up with and and tried to live out is to pray to play to read to wrestle and to work mm -hmm. um, and when I look at those the first and most important one is pray and what does that mean in fatherhood, right? right? And so we were talking about imitation, be worthy of imitation. If there's one thing that I want my son to imitate me on, and it's not yelling at the TV during a sports game, it's my prayer, or at pursuit of prayer. Because prayer is hard. Uh, what does that even mean? How do we pray? How do we encounter, have this conversation with God? What does that look like? And it can take on many different forms. Um, but a little bit of quiet time each day. If my son can see me find that quiet time with a cup of coffee and a book, with my wife, with the whole family, to sit down and to yeah. just have that conversation mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ, yeah. to foster, the whole purpose of it is to foster that relationship with him. Yes. That's the one thing that I hope and pray that he learns to imitate. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is, is the pursuit of that. Yes. Yeah. My, my father was not a big, you know, outward praying person. Um, he would pray the rosary, did not share with me about the rosary, how to pray the rosary, mm -hmm. but he would pray the rosary. So I knew he did that. I didn't know what that was all about, but I learned later. Um, we were kind of on and off regarding going to mass, mm -hmm. but I can remember, and I, st I think about this so often, about sitting in a pew with him. And I lost my mom when I was five years old, right? So my father was like a really big part of my life. And I can remember him sitting over there. I don't know how old I was, maybe eight or nine or something. And so we're waiting for the mass to begin. And my father was a milkman. He'd get up three o'clock in the morning. Mm. My father was a man's man, like kind of guy. And uh, he, but I remember glancing over. And it's the only time I saw him. I looked over at him, and he he had his rosary beads around his hand. Mm. The crucifix was up there. Mm. His eyes were just moist, and he was like, he looked like he was in ecstasy. Mm -hmm this rough guy who didn't teach me much about prayer. Sure. I just looked at him, had the rosary around his hands. I was just looking up. And I looked, and I looked over at him. And he looked at me, and, and our eyes caught. I'm still talking about that today. Today. Right? My mm -hmm. father yep. you know, my, so many years gone. Just that moment. And it's not a deep conversation. Right. It, you know, he didn't have to sit down and walk we, you through step He wasn't by a step. talker either. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to talk about it. Like, was, wasn't that meaningful? It was in a glance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that he, that you saw. That's right. His daily encounter right. with the Lord. And I imagine and that's something you, in your heart hit you mm -hmm. that said, yeah. I want that too, yeah. you know? What is that or yeah. I want it? So that's your hope. That that's my hope. Yeah. And it, you know, I have an amazing father as well. Uh, we're best friends as well. Um, and one of the things my dad did extraordinarily well when I was growing up, uh, he grew up a Lutheran but converted to Catholicism uh, to raise us kids Catholic. And what he did extraordinarily well was take the Mass very seriously. And he was always the one to lead us to go to Mass. We're going to Mass. Mm -hmm. And when we're at Mass, we're going to pay attention. We're going to pray. <laughs> we're going to sit still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, when it came time to my conversion in college, I remember re-falling in love with mm -hmm. the Mass. Mm -hmm. Because that was something I grew up with that I understood that my father did really well. Mm -hmm. and. And now I, I try to do that myself. So when we go to Mass, yeah. I again, I want to show my wow. son, here's what it means. We're not going to check it off the list. Right. We're not going just to pay our dues. Mm -hmm. We're going to yeah. worship our Lord mm -hmm. in, in the best way possible, mm -hmm. right? To receive him, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Um, He's really, he's here. really yeah. here. Yeah. He's you can coming. Have a he's here. Relationship and, with exactly. Him. And yes. you can tell if someone mm -hmm. believes that or not. You can tell if they understand that mm -hmm. or not. And if, if I can show my son by going to mass, yeah. that I believe that and that I think that that's real. Well, my hope is he's going to want that it's too. A, and, that, and, and that's the difficult part. Yeah, I mean, you you want to give as many things as you can, but it's always hope. Yeah. Because that that's that's. You can't, the, you're, 
can't force anything. There's that You're, thing free will. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like will. that's a real yep, pain. Why God did that exactly? Yep, I'm not quite sure, but yep. it's free will. Yep. So like, and that that gets into the Father's heart that God did everything right with mm -hmm. Adam and with Eve. And when we've had some difficulties, you know, with our children, because Joy wasn't all she could be, I was. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> That was a joke. That's a lie. He's, yeah, ignore but, but you, him. You know, know. It, it's like we had to go, it was like sometimes we think we can do everything right, we're the best Catholics possible, and I believe in the encounter, plus I believe in the doctrines, plus I believe in that, so it's going to turn out this way. Not maybe, so. Maybe, yeah. maybe, that, maybe, that's maybe never, not. It's not always like that, you know. And You're uh, right. Hope. You use the right words. Cause we don't want to think like this is a guarantee for you because yep. there's that free will Hope into prayer. And sometimes faith is caught, mm -hmm. not taught. Hmm. That... I, I, when your children, I, in our lives, I know it to be true, is when they've seen us respond in situations mm. of trials and tribulations, you know, they'll see us fall to our knees and say, okay, Lord, we're counting on you. Just get us through the storm. The storm doesn't end, mm -hmm. but God meets you in the storm. Absolutely. And so then they're like, hmm, okay, so that, and they catch it. And our children in their lives mm -hmm. now, and they're grown, when they have trials and tribulations, they know they got the anchor. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, we saw you go through this. Because a lot of it is caught. Yeah. You know? So we've got wrestling, <coughs> I'd rather say meaningful touch or sacramental <laughs> sure. touch, yeah. um, and prayer. Prayer. What else you got? Play. Okay. And this is, again, something that I think we get too busy for as parents, yeah. is we forget to play, just mm -hmm. to play. And when I say play, I mean phones down, computers right. down, TV off, and we're just playing. Yeah. Whether it's um, football in the backyard, or wiffle ball, or cars on the, on the ground, or dolls, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. they love to do. Right. And that's something I've learned, is right. sometimes I'll say, well, let's Let's play with dad once. Right. It's like, you know? dad, I don't even want to No, like I don't want to do right. that. I want to do this. Right. And, and so then to dive into that activity mm -hmm. yeah. and to use your imagination to be creative with mm -hmm. them, they will see that you are here for them in this moment. And there is nothing else that's going to get in the way of this moment. Mm -hmm. And again, what, what that comes down to is love, right? right. What we are trying to do is to, sh to say, I'm here. Yeah. For you right now because I love you and there's nothing else I love more right you know right yeah. now mm -hmm. with yeah. by removing distractions than yeah. to just play right. yeah That's and it's it's just that timelessness with that person <laughs> that they will yeah it, never forget yeah. and and forever appreciate <laughs> and sometimes it's That's endless right. games of tic-tac-toe you bet or hangman and you're just like oh really how many one? more games it's just like yeah. till they're exhausted and done yep. you know it's like yeah. but yeah. It, but that's the beauty of them like you said you're entering in and saying mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna learn how to play and you're gonna learn how to play mm -hmm. and we're gonna have fun together yeah yep. a big word in our house with our grandkids is fun yeah if we're not having fun we're not gonna do it we're gonna have fun so the kids walk around they go <laughs> that's all fun <laughs> are we having fun no, no i'm having fun. fun are you having yeah. fun because yeah. just, yeah. just being together is fun yeah yep. when we asked to do this show right so i thought it was oh crap well we can do a show at home with you enjoy how people on this is going to be okay here's how we got to do this and joy said if this ain't fun i'm not doing it i was like what she goes if this isn't fun i'm not doing it and I, mean and I said it. wow it fun. Fun. it's gonna be fun because your mother angelica was like that too i mean she was fun I mean, she was strong, yeah. but she was fun. Yeah. The other thing that I want to just point out is with today's technology, it's very easy to just right. pop in a movie right. and think that you're having fun or playing, mm -hmm. you know, or to th th throw on a video game. Not that those are bad. Um, they have their place. They have their place. But when I say play, I mean hands-on, mm -hmm. fully engaged, mm -hmm. looking at, into their eyes. But that's the encounter thing, together. right? Encounter yep. is... Mm -hmm. When I served as a, as a minister in another world, another time, you know, we had a liturgy mm -hmm. in the Episcopal Church and I was serving. And it, periodically I'd say to the people, you know, the liturgy is like tennis or ping pong, okay? Like, you got to hit the ball back. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, we're yeah. going back for what? I feel like I'm just kind of hitting the ball out. Maybe some priests can kind of relate to that. You've got to respond. Sure. Because I, I don't know where you are. Or, like today, you say hello to kids and everything. They don't even know how to say hello back or to shake your hand. Mm -hmm. But that extension, by the way, you didn't shake my hand. Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I say to kids, by the, by yeah. the way, yeah. you're supposed to shake hands. Yeah. I mean, you know, I would say to the kid, because it's an encounter. Sure. I can't encounter you. Sure. Did I do something wrong? Is my hand dirty? Or yeah. maybe you don't, like, what's going on here? Yeah. The encounter is the extension. Because of the we're made person. for relationships. Right. And that's with what God, you're saying. With each other, you know. 
Um, and, and but that's not gonna, work. That, it is work. And a lot, of, it is a lot work. of more and more parents, unfortunately, I don't think kids have gotten any worse. Parents have. Well, we get we get tired. We get busy. We you know um, we come hey, up with all kinds tired, of excuses. Come up to, there you go. Excuses. There, there are excuses, yeah. right? And so that's what I'm saying is, if if we can just approach these five simple. How many have you said so far? I'm not sure. You have many? work. You I have can to come do. up with a. Few we more. ask the questions. You can't yeah. ask them back. <laughs> so you got touch. So I've got I've got touch. I've got pray, play, play. pray, play, okay. read, read, another art that we've just forgotten about. Right. We we've forgotten how to read. <laughs> and we've forgotten how to read books with our children. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I started off with some of these shorter kids' books, right? Mm -hmm. Well, my son and I got into the Chronicles of Narnia recently. Excellent. I'm fascinated yes. by it. It's a mm -hmm. great story. Yes. And it's, it's a story that requires mm -hmm. imagination. Mm -hmm. It's not, I'm okay, I'm going to flip through this and right. just yeah. skip a few pages mm -hmm. and move on, you know, so I can, again, check this off the list. Right. We'll sit down for reading time. Mm -hmm. and, and we get prepared, we get mm -hmm. ready because the story is exciting mm -hmm. and there's questions that yeah. follow and then we start talking about characters and well, why did they do that and what happened here mm -hmm. and I don't think that was very nice and you know, this was kind of yeah. mean or grumpy over here and we get to talk about it. And there's just, uh, there's again, something about quiet time yeah. of being together mm -hmm. and reading a good story. And the Chronicles you know? of Narnia are really like kind of out there with imagination and stuff and things so and creatures, perfect. isn't it? Like yes. That? Yeah. And that's great and too. It cre yeah, right. it uses your brain. You're not just, uh, you know, again, not just watching a show, yeah. you know, right. to, to turn your yeah. brain off. You actually have to turn in your brain sure, off. Joe, let's take an email. Okay, it says, I have heard several times that the father plays a very important role in the lives of their daughters. How the father treats his wife and daughters influences what type of spouse the daughters will pick later in life. Do you believe that this is true? And this is Kent from Wilmington, Delaware. Kent, uh, hello. I do think that's very true. Yeah. Um, I've got two older sisters, and the way my dad loved my mother, and um, they're still married as mm -hmm. well, praise be to God, and yeah. the way he instilled into me the appreciation, the gratitude, the love, the care that I need to love my sisters and my mm -hmm. mother with, mm -hmm. the way he did that taught me very much about women, you know, yeah. so I didn't, um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't take a class to learn yeah. how to treat women and, and I'm trying to teach Colby that as well, by the way, I yeah. love Allie and yeah. this just came to my mind, you know, I think children can learn in a very healthy way how to resolve conflict by the conflict between mm -hmm. a, a husband and wife as mm -hmm. well, you know? So we, when Allie and I have conflict, we will talk it out in front of Colby. Mm -hmm. And so that way he sees how I'm going to continue to love right. and to treat my wife with mm -hmm. respect, Allie, in the midst of that conflict. Right. And so I very much agree that the way a father loves his wife, the way a father treats and loves his daughters, mm -hmm. will yeah. teach sons uh, specifically, but all their children, the difference in a man and a woman, right? Yeah, and uh, how we ought to treat those people differently, and then, uh, yeah. as he mentioned, picking a spouse—it's right. huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the best thing to say. You know, we have to do a lot of premarital counseling and everything else, but you know, one of the best things you could do for your child, best thing, love your wife, love your wife, and respect mm -hmm. your wife, other people. You know, show that, do that, you blow it, say you blew it, whatever, but that's what they're really looking at. How mm -hmm. does he love my mother, mm -hmm. you know? Because you could say all sorts of things. If that ain't happening, it, it isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And they're watching when oh, they're we don't watching. think they're watching. Sure. They're watching and everything. Is dad intentionally disrespecting mom? Mm -hmm. Is he intentionally hurting her with mm -hmm. his words, with, you know, the way he's acting? Yep. You know, and because they're taking their cues. Yep. And then know? imitation. Right. Again, right? In a yeah. negative way. Mm -hmm. So you have work. Tell us about work. Work. Work is the last one. Now, my dad, going back, an amazing father, he taught me at a very early age that work is good. Mm -hmm. That uh, we, as humans, were in a way created for work, right? Uh, Adam and Eve were placed in the garden to till the garden, to work in the garden. That's pre-fall. So work was not a go. punishment. A lot of people think work right. is a result of the of fall. The fall. Right. Yeah, right. it's not. Uh, our bodies, our minds, our, our souls were created for work. And so I was out mowing the lawn at a very early age. Um, and, and at the age of around 10. You, what, 
Now, I read your stuff. You didn't just mow a lawn. You said like 14 lawns so, in a day or yeah. something? So at the age okay. of 10, we started <laughs> That's a child labor a lawns. lawn yeah. mowing <laughs> business. <laughs> for, uh, I, we, we made a lot of money, I so bet. it was okay. Um, but uh, we started a lawn mowing business, my dad and I, for a builder. Mm -hmm. yeah. For all the homes that they were trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So it started with me hooking up hoses on my bike yeah. and riding around and changing the sprinklers because they didn't have sprinkler systems. Yeah. So every hour I'd go ride around all these houses, move the sprinkler to keep the, the lawns yeah. green. And I did that every other day in the summer. So my summers growing up as a, you know, as a yeah. adolescent, mm -hmm. I understood work. Yeah. My friends were out. Well, you understood not, work yeah. and you understood money because you said yep. it was okay. I made money. Yep. You know, like today, that's another bad thing, you know. No, work, money, earn your money, get your money, make a living. Hello. Sure. Like, that's what you need to learn. You need to teach your kids that. Yep. Our nation needs yep. that. The world and needs that. I understood that. how to save and how mm -hmm. to spend uh, mm -hmm. appropriately. But, yeah, we ended up getting about 14 lawns uh, <laughs> going. And so we would we'd go up Saturday morning. And, and you were doing this with your dad. With my dad. And so just, again, yeah. great time right. with him. That yeah. I'll never forget as well. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So, beautiful. Yeah. so what are you doing with Colby? Does he help you with yard work? Well, he's six, so we're we're mm -hmm. starting to learn how to mow a little mm -hmm. bit, you know. Um, he he uh, we tried just the other day actually, yeah. and he he doesn't understand the straight line right. yet, and right. so it, you know, I, you it, gotta it let that quite, go. Uh, we teaching. let it go. I let it go, <laughs> and then I go. I make right. nice straight mm -hmm. lines, but mm -hmm. um, yep. So he does that. We have uh, you know a morning power hour on Saturday mornings mm -hmm. where. Yeah. The whole family stops and you know, we, so I'm going to share the something house. That, that's we really the amazing. House Talk about work, you know. So I've done work with my kids, but when I was pastoring in this other world, of the, m my son wanted to work for the church, mowing and mowing, and he was doing okay, not okay. So I had to fire my son. He did, and his sister took the job. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. No, no. The hardest say, thing is his sisters got the, the, the sisters job. took that's it over, the, they were like, yeah, and they were like, great, dad. you know. Yeah. But you know, the other thing was like excellence. Yeah. Not only excellence, like y if you're going to say you're going to show up on this day to work, or guess yep. what? You go out in the world, you're yep. going to get fired. You have to work right. hard. You you're fired. Get fired you know, you can still live in my house, but well, you are fired. his deal was he wanted to play basketball. So he was like, Dad, I'll mow at 10. Yeah. And then his friend showed up, and they had to play ball. But this guy I'll is the hardest, hardest now worker hard, today. Hard worker. I mean, Matt guy. is like a um, brick, block, stone worker teaching his kids. So, yeah. you know, the things so that the you're hitting on. So the work ethic is so important. Yeah. I mean, you've got some amazing keys that you're hitting on. That they seem like, well, work, everybody knows you need to work. Well, not really. Mm -hmm. And to play and to meaningfully touch. Yeah. And your own personal call you speak about to holiness. Yeah, so those are all very simple tips, right? And I think we can all start somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, every father can look at one of those and say, okay, I'll start with that one and I'll start small, whatever that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, at the end of the day, uh, Jim, it's a call to holiness. And it doesn't matter. Um, as fathers, our identity is not in our jobs at the mm -hmm. end of the day. It's not in our house. It's not in our car. It's not in what people think of us. Um, it, our identity is in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and it is that pursuit of holiness. Yeah. And that is what we need to instill in yeah. our sons and daughters mm -hmm. as fathers and in our wives mm -hmm. as well. Because that, and that's our role mm -hmm. as the father of a family. That is our role is to guide and protect, just like Adam, uh, yeah failed to do, to guard and protect our wives and our children, to introduce them to the love of Jesus Christ, and to model that for them so that they too can encounter Amen. the love of Christ, to accept his grace and mercy, yep. and to enter into that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's our role. That's mm -hmm. what we're here to do. Well, Steve, stick with us. We're going into our last segment. We're going to carry Steve Priest over. It's Steve Priest, P-R-I-E-S, at Gmail. Dot com. You can also go to Catholic Speakers Bureau if you wanted to come out and give a talk at your parish on various subjects. You'd be glad to do that. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come.
are an important part of our EWTN family. And you know, you could join us live right here on At Home, and you can be a member of our studio it's audience. It's the biggest audience ever. Today we to have it. people big. from Louisiana and from Ireland, so beautiful. So if you're interested in coming to EWTN and make your pilgrimage, all you need to do is contact the pilgrimage department, pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them a jingle at 205-271-2966 and make your way to Irondale, Alabama. You can go up to Hansville to Mother's Resting Place and we would love to have you. Well, right now we're gonna go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome, from my home to your home. And I have to tell you, it's been one amazing weekend here in Rome. Friday was a national holiday, so lots of Italians, lots of Romans left the city. But you know what? They were replaced by tens of thousands of faithful who came to celebrate the birth of the church. And of course, that's Pentecost. And among those were about 30, 35,000 Catholic charismatic renewal members as they celebrate their 50 years. Now they were all in the Circus Maximus with Pope Francis on Saturday for a very rousing, wonderful Pentecost vigil. And then Sunday, of course, in St. Peter's Square, the Pope presided at the Mass of Pentecost. And uh, the square was filled with the color I'm wearing today, the color of Pentecost, and that, of course, is red. And by the way, the Vatican gendarmes said that the, they estimated the number of faithful in the square at 60,000. Now, Pope Francis's homily focused on two actions of the Holy Spirit, of his creating new people and giving each of those persons a new heart. That's Pentecost. He said, first, the Holy Spirit rests on each of the disciples and then brings all of them together in fellowship, giving them each a gift for the good of the whole community. And Francis said the same spirit creates diversity and unity, and in this way forms a new, diverse, but unified body, and that's called the Universal Church. He also said we have to avoid two recurrent temptations. The temptation to seek diversity without unity and unity without diversity. And then some very beautiful words. The Francis said, let's pray to the Spirit to receive unity and to ask for a heart that feels that the church is our mother and our home, an, opening and, an open and welcoming home where the manifold joy of the Spirit is present and manifest. And then at the end of Mass, by the way, important to tell you that the Holy Father did speak of the victims of Saturday night's tragic attack in London, which of course killed seven and wounded uh, scores of people. The Pope said, may the Holy Spirit grant peace to the whole world. May he heal the wounds of war and terrorism, which even Saturday night in London struck innocent civilians. Let us pray for the victims and their families, and I'm sure we all have done that already. So, as usual, time's up here, but back to you at home. Joan, thank you so much. We bless your life. We thank God for you and all that you bring to us right there at the Vatican, Joan Lewis. Steve, the conversation has been absolutely you know, wonderful, and as I was saying to you during the break, you know, it's not only what you're saying, but mm -hmm. it's the way you look about it, and we need so much to see and to hear about fatherhood in the church and in our culture at this time. Yeah, as we started our time together, the art of fatherhood is, lo is being lost or mm -hmm. being forgotten about or being yeah. ignored. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those who don't have a relationship with their father, um, first of all, that's, that's okay. Because Jesus is there mm -hmm. and, and he has adopted you, you know, as, yeah. as your son or as his son or his daughter. Um, so to look to him. Yes. Now, if you don't have a relationship with your father, I... I guess I might pray and hope that you consider looking into that, to to um, trying to connect again, yeah, you know, right. um, because I think God desires that. Yeah. God desires that we have a relationship with our parents, mm -hmm. um, and if it's possible and right. if it's safe and all those things. Yeah. And yeah, as we come up on Father Father's Day, the 18th, you're, it's a mixed thing. I mean, you've mm -hmm. shared so much positive, and you're positive, but yeah, there's a lot of broken mm -hmm. relationships. Yep. Some of us have lost our fathers, and the yep. relationship was broken. Yep. I still think we should speak to God, talk about that relationship, go visit the burial site. Uh, you know, w you know, just just do what we need to do in this mm -hmm. whole area. Um, and you know what you were saying through your talk, you know, the call to holiness, our own personal holiness, because I know even in my own life, 
it's a mixed thing. You know, I feel like I've succeeded. You know, you you set such a high standard in some what you're saying and. How many times have I failed in this? So for fathers yeah. out there, you know, Father's Day might be a day like, you know, I don't want to think too much about Father's Day. Come to your Heavenly yep. Father. Yep. You know, be His child and say, Daddy, somehow, some way, right straight on crooked lines in my life, yep. things that I've done, yep. and just kind of make it straight in the yep. end. And he'll do because that. we are broken. We are sinful, mm -hmm. you know, but it's with His grace and His mercy yeah. that He makes us whole again. Yep. Um, and so we can be those fathers that we desire to be and that God is calling us to be. Steve, how do people connect with you? The best way if they want you to come out and talk. Sure. You also do MC work, I, yes, which is yep. like really important. Yeah. yeah, I love MCing events. I love giving talks or whatever, you know, whatever way God can use me. They can go to CatholicSpeakers.com. CatholicSpeakers.com. Catholic dot com. Dot okay. Find me there or email me at StevePriest at gmail.com. Okay. That would be great. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, you know, there was one last thing. We mm -hmm. talked about uh, kind of the pains of, of infertility. Yes. And for those who are struggling with that, um, be okay with, with who God made you to be. Yes. Accept who God made you to be. Yes. Be open to how God might be calling you in other ways to be a parent, whether through adoption, whether through spiritual adoption. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but to just, again, pursue holiness and mm -hmm. to be okay with who, who God is intending you to be. Amen. Steve, thank you so much thank for being you, with us. Thank you for Great having job. me. You know, I was thinking today, the 11 most important words you may ever hear, you're my beloved son, you're my beloved daughter with whom I am well pleased. That's your first calling. It's to know that you are a son and a daughter of God. Everything else will fall into place. God bless you. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.